Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today, we are coming live from our little crafty workshop. Um, we're joined by Colwyn on the questions. So if you've got any questions, chuck them in the comments and we'll, we'll answer them the best we can. Um, today, we're back on the scroll saw. So we've got a little um, kind of slot together bird that we're going to do. And this one's just to give you an idea. Um, there's lots of different versions of this you can do. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples as well. Um, so you can make them however you like. Now, you can't really see it, but it is just here next to me. If I um, if I stand behind here, you'll see the little birdies. But they kind of disappear on the background. Um, so we've got some little birdies here. And I know we're not getting a great view, um, but we'll show you these close up as we make them. Um, and this is just put on a little bit of um, kind of driftwood. I guess it's some stuff that was um, earmarked for magic wands but it's been um, turned into a, um, a kind of holder for this mobile. So it's just a pair of cross sticks um, and a bit of fishing wire. And, you know, you can make these lovely little things. And there's really um, not a lot of work to do on these ones. So we might be um, quite swift going through the demo. Um, so, yeah, easy peasy this one. We're going to show you. We'll come over to the bench and we'll, we'll show you what we're going to be doing. So this is my template, okay? And again, this is just something I've, I've um, you know, pulled off of uh, Google Images. Really, really simple little design. And you can see we've got these wing shapes, we've got a, a tail shape and, um, and a kind of generic body. And you could change the, the shape of these if you'd like, if you wanted to change, um, you know, the tail perhaps, um, make it into a different bird, um, but, I'm just going to go with what's, um, you know, what I've printed off. And you guys know the drill by now. Um, I'm going to cut these templates out. I'm going to stick it down with a bit of uh, the copy decks glue. So just roughly cutting these out. I don't want to leave too much paper on there because then we're using more glue as well. So just roughly cutting out the template and pop that to one side. And we want each of these little individual bits. Okay, so there's his body. Let's come across here for the tail. And this is very um, thin material we're, we're cutting these from. And I've gone with a bit of hardwood. We've got um, our our tulip, which we use a lot. We've got a bit of oak here. Um, but it's very thin material. It's kind of like about four mil. So if I show you that, um, you can see how thin it is. They're quite delicate little, um, little birdies. Um, I'm going to cut mine out on the tulips. Not quite wide enough for my bit of oak, but I have got a couple of the oak ones on, um, on the mobile already. Um, and we're just doing a couple of little checks. Um, sometimes you get splits in the ends of the boards. We wanna make sure that this is nice and solid all the way through. Um, if you see a bit of paint on the end, that's quite often a telltale sign that it's the end of the board. And also just looking out, I've got a little drill hole here, so I'm just going to try and avoid that. So, grain direction can be very important. Um, the grain is running this way. Um, and a lot of these feathers are kind of on a diagonal. So I'm trying to get the best, you know, we're going to be short grained if we're this way across each of these feathers. Um, so I think probably better to orientate the, the, um, the template um, there. Same with these tail feathers. We've got a bit more of the long grain running through. Um, and that's just going to give it a little bit more, um, a little bit more strength. Cool, so we can stick those on, on there. Got my classic um, copy decks. Really good stuff, this. And I'm just going to pop some of that on the back. Not too heavy. This is kind of like a, a rubbery or silicon type glue, which holds together when you're, when you're peeling these things back off um, once you've done your project. So my wings are going there. Just being careful not to twist it or 
fold it or anything. And we just stick that one down. It dries really quickly as well, this glue. So we're not hanging around waiting for it to uh, cure. So a bit of that. Let's get our tail. Oh, I stuck it to the sheet. There we go. So that can just go there. I'll smooth that out. And then our little body. Oops. And I've gone a bit heavy with the glue, so I'm just going to take off the excess with the brush and just rub it onto that bit underneath. Good. So that is our little birdie. Um, so we're going that way. We will remember we want to keep that strength running through the grain. A bit mucky that one, but that's fine. We're going to lose that in a moment. So that's our um, our template stuck down. Remember, we were looking for any potential splits in the board, and I've just dodged uh, what is a little drill hole. Um, now, let's cut our bird out. We're going to do that on our on our scroll saw. So come on over. Just going to pop that there for a moment. And first job, I'm just going to cut off this excess really make the whole thing a bit more a bit easier to handle okay so we've got our first question yeah hi everybody um ben this is a question from david he says uh, that he's got the same model scroll saw as you've got there mm -hmm. um it's connected to an nvd 750 the problem is that it, the, the mvd doesn't pull all the dust from the scroll saw so have you got any ideas to increase the efficiency um usually it's a problem of too much um, extraction on these scroll saws that the, actually it pulls it down onto the plate. Um, it could be, it could be something like that, like it's sucking too much. And actually, underneath the table here, just underneath um, our little extraction port, there's a very thin film. Um, and when that the pull is too strong, it can actually suck onto the bottom of the table. Um, and quite often, um, I've got a little extraction um, port here. Um, just under the table and I've had to drill holes in that because I found the extraction is just too much um, to try and improve the extraction um, I can't think of anything just check for any holes where the um, the the film underneath may have come away um, so just under this this plate here um, you'll see that little film layer perhaps um, a bit of um, like a you know, like electrical tape or something like that to really kind of um, seal any holes underneath. But but really, there's not um, a great deal um, you can do to increase the extraction. I certainly wouldn't go um, making any of these little apertures any bigger or anything like that. Um, but yeah, just, just check the underneath. Make sure we've got a good seal under there. Um, and, and, and just check it's not pulling too hard. Those ND, NDV uh, 750s have got a really good strong suction on it. And it could be the actual reverse that is actually pulling too hard and sucking that extraction plate to the bottom of the um, bottom of the scroll saw. All right. Good stuff. Um, so a couple of um, checks before we get going. Just going to check under the table make sure that we're at 90 degrees so i'm looking at the the blade that way um check the tension that seems pretty good and also make sure you got your ppe so we're talking goggles in this um in this case um nvr switch on the back of the machine and then we've got our um, power button right up the front of the business end there And like I say, I'm just going to take the waste, or not the waste, we'll keep it something else, but take the excess off of our uh, um, project. And the downwards pressure on the table is quite important on a project like this. Um, you don't want this to lift. 
and um, and get caught on the the bottom of our little hold down clamp there. Um, because it's so thin, it you know it will really suffer if it if it gets lifted and 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 smacked on the bottom of that um, bottom of that hold down clamp. So I'm giving a nice decent amount of pressure down onto the table. To stop this quite fragile piece of timber um, from breaking. So I'm not going to go into that little cutout yet. That's the little cutout where we slot the two pieces together. I'm coming around the top of that for now. And I'll do that on all those pieces. Um, and we'll come back and resize that. And again, I'm just going to come straight out of the bottom here. And we'll concentrate on the tail first. Pop in the rest of the project um, to one side. Now, this can be quite tricky to, to hold on to. Again, we've got this guarding, the hold down clamp. Um, but I've just lifted that a little bit so I can get my fingers in underneath, get my fingers nice and close to the blade. And we're just starting off like that. And we're gonna follow down our project. Now, this blade, this is one of the modified geometry blades. So it has got an upwards facing tooth. And I can feel one of those teeth, perhaps it's been knocked or um, it's just in manufacture it's not been quite set right um, and what it's doing is it's picking up on the bottom and actually um because this is so delicate i think i'm going to swap that blade out we don't want to um to snap these feathers off so straight away just through the feel of um how it's cutting i'm just going to um to swap my blade um, i did get one out in preparation there it is. So just swapping out the blade. That's going straight through that little um, hole in the extraction plate. Um, teeth facing forwards and pointing downwards. Let me pop that in the um, clamp. In the clamp here. And I always give it a little wiggle under the table, make sure it's actually gripped it and always give it that extra little tweak in. Okay, so we've got another question. Yeah, I've got a question here from Paul. Mm -hmm. um, so he's new to scroll sawing. Um, he's got just recently got an 8535. Um, can't see the point of the hold down clamp though. So the 355, so he's got the the um, the trade one. Uh, no, that would be the, five, that's the, the Five, three, AT, did he say? Yeah. Um, AC, it must be, I think. Okay, yeah. Um, so a lot of people take these straight off, um, but I certainly think they, um, they, they, there's a good role for them. They, they're keeping the project from lifting up. Um, so sometimes when you're working on thicker pieces, um, your, your blade and the, the waist can kind of bind up inside. Um, and that quite often can cause a, a, a catch or a grab. Um, and that will then lift the um, project off of the table and you'll get this kind of banging going on. Um, and that can snap blades and things. So it's really there to stop the project from coming up too far and, um, and causing that, um, those braid, uh, blade breakages. All right, so another question. Yeah, my apologies to Paul there. That is the accidents to trade that he's got. So thanks for that one, Ben. Yeah. Um, Martin's asking, um, so if the tension of the blade is too tight, will it make the cutting harder? It shouldn't do. Um, like all these things, um, you know, we get a lot of people talking about over-tensioning things. And actually, you're much likely to break a blade or something like that, if the tension is not high enough. Um, because that kind of slack, that looseness 
um, causes the blade to kind of bow as it comes down as the teeth engage it will um, yeah it will kind of bend the, the, the blade and, and snap it so what I'm doing here we've got rounded ends on all of these feathers but I'm just back tracking up the cut turning the piece and then feeding onto that next line. If you find it easier, keep hold of that big bit of waste that we've taken this from. So I'm gonna backtrack up here now, keeping the teeth on the waist side. And then I'm going to come back down this one we started a minute ago. Just picking up on that next line. And not too worried about the roundness of those feathers. We can revisit that. And, and just trim off those kind of sharp bits but much easier to kind of reverse up the cut than um, trying to um, cut each of these rounds, so spinning it and, and coming back up this way. Um, whereas if we just back up the line and come down, we've got a sharp edge, but we can just trim that off. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm bringing my finger very close to the blade now, just supporting that little feather. Because like I say, three, four mil material is very, very delicate. Um, but I do like doing them in the hardwoods. You could do this in a, in a birch ply, something like that. It'll give you a lot more strength and you can be a lot more daring with, um, you know, how you're treating it. Um, but I really like the effect of the, um, the hardwoods. So that's our little tail for now. Okay. Um, let's come in on the body. Okay, so another question. Yeah, could you remind us of the blade that you're using there, please? That's correct. Um, so it's a modified geometry number five. Um, All right. And Frederick's asked, and um, he's noticed that you tested the tension by pinging the blade. Is there a particular sound you're listening for, or are you testing to try to flex it? Like no, e absolutely. I'm listening to that that pitch. Um, and I don't know the actual note it makes, but I know the sound that I'm kind of looking for. Um, I'm sure if you looked it up online, there's going to be a, a note that you can um, reproduce to, for the perfect tension. And I've even seen guys with like tuning forks and um, ringing the tuning fork, pinging it on the table. And, you know, but it's not like a piano. We don't have to tune it to perfection. Um, we're just looking for that kind of good tension and in a way I'm kind of feeling for any slackness and um, just looking for that little that little ping on the blade that that note I didn't realize it was so precise we've got Paul Paul Kelly here asking the same question as Frederick um, can you use a guitar tuner or <laughs> you some probably other device could. <laughs> absolutely you could my brother used to play the guitar and he had a little electric tuner um, and I remember the the um, the lights coming on he would be plucking away at the strings um, absolutely, you could do that, um, but unfortunately, I don't know that. Um, that I don't know what that note is off the top of my head. I quite often thought, with all the various noises we can make in the workshop, with I don't know hammer blows and ping in the scroll saw blade. We could do our own version of um, the tubular bells, a workshop version. So I've got a little, um, a sharp beak here. I'm going to do um, a loop the loop. So I'm coming around like this. And that's going to give me that definition on the beak there. A nice sharp um, beak. So rather than trying to come around the beak, I've gone out round and looped the loop just to give us that definition. And following these lines, I 
offering lots of support close to the cup with that finger there. And again, I'm just going straight past those um, those little cutouts and we'll revisit that. Always slowing down at the end of the cut there. Allow the blade to, um, to cut its way out rather than, um, you know, putting a lot of pressure on it suddenly pings out because you'll get the break out then and torn fibers and things. So there's our little body. Again, pop that with the tail. And then we've got the tricky bit. This is the, the wings here. Always save the best to last. So just coming in at a nice angle to pick up on that line. And as I go, I'm kind of changing the pivot point. So at the top there, as I was coming around that curve, I was pivoting on this finger. As we come to this one, I'm going to pivot on that finger. I'm going to come around this first one. Just resting on the back of the blade there because I slightly overshot it. And then just coming back in on that curve. And it's taking really little effort to, um, to make these cuts being such thin material. Really easy. And you notice I haven't got my dust extractor um, on today because it's not really producing much dust. Such small cuts, such thin material. And I can see just by eye that feather's a little bit thin where I've drawn it out. So I'm just giving it a little bit extra kind of as you go. Again, backing out of those cuts. Switching the direction and then picking back up on each line of these feathers. Let's get my blower engaged. Just make sure I'm not covering the cut there. And we've got another question. Couple of questions, Ben. Um, mm -hmm. Maria's asking next time, can we get an ultra close up image of the uh, the cutting going on? I'd like to see what you mean by backing up the cut, all those sorts of okay, things. Okay, so let's do it now. Yeah, go. Yeah, for let's it. go. Um, so anything? swap cameras over, Colin, so we don't get um, seasick. So if you pop it on the main one there, I'm going to use that to come in extra close. Sorry, Maria, just playing with the camera a little bit. Whilst you're doing that, can I ask you a few other questions? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, thanks, Colin. Yeah, so Mike was just saying um, that scroll saw, isn't that the same as his father used 60-odd years ago, a foot-pedal-driven fret saw? Absolutely, yeah, with the little the little wheels spinning around. Yeah, really cool machines, those. They will outlast all of these with motors on them. They'll be going and going and going, those, those type of scroll saws. Sorry, folks, I'm just trying to get in really close here so you can actually see what we're doing. And sorry, That's a bit better. Mark was asking, he said, um, isn't a number five blade a bit big for this, the thickness of the wood? Usually you've used a number two for this project, much finer wing and feather lines. Yeah, so um, so number five is generally quite a thick blade, um, but the modified geometry one, um, you're, they're talking about from the back of the kind of the back of the blade to the tip of the tooth. Um, and actually... There's great big gullets on the um, on the number f on the modified geometry type blades, um, so they actually produce a much finer cut. They've got less of a curf, so um, you know where you have one tooth facing one way, one on the other. Um, they've got less of a curf on the on the than the standard blades because each of those little teeth is actually been shaped, um, so it allows you to come around those corners without having that steep curf on the blade. So it's less waste. Um, they're, they're top blades, um, definitely recommend them. And I just go up to number five for a bit of strength because um, it still gives you that fine cut. And you've got a blade with a bit more um, a bit more durability, I guess. All right. So let's come back in on the scroll saw here. I think we're, we're pretty close. Beautiful. Yeah, you can see that. 
Um, so what I've been doing, let's find where we are. It just feels a little bit, no, we're good. So probably not the best example here because they're on the very small feathers. But what I'm doing is coming down to that bottom of that line, backing up. And instead of trying to follow the curve of that feather on this side, I've just looped around the top and cutting down to the line there. So rather than try and follow the full shape of the, um, the feather, I'm just going across the top of it and then just getting back into that little groove there. What I'll do is I'll cut my way out and come back from the other side. And also, um, with the with the size of the blades, um, <clears throat> quite often, if you're just cutting outside shapes, um, you know, the, you can go with a big blade and get still get a really good finish. Um, the the I, I you know, if I'm doing things that kind of mesh together, or you're doing like intarsia or something like that, or puzzles, um, you probably do want to um, go down to those. Um, smaller numbers so generally I use the number five modified geometry for pretty much everything and I'll drop down to a number three if um, if I'm doing like puzzle pieces so you want as little waste as, as possible um, and again that depends on the thickness of the piece so this is what I'm, I'm talking about here Maria so coming down across the top of the feather there. And then backing right up. And instead of trying to turn the blade around and coming across the top of that um, curve, I'm just skipping that inside section and coming down the, um, the other side of the feather. So back up my cut. And on those lines. So in effect, they're all coming out spiky at the moment. They've got a um, they've got a sharp point on that left side of each feather. I'm gonna get my finger in nice and close now to where the cut's happening. Again, switching grip as if, you, if you're having difficulty to kind of access that area. I'm just going to trim that last bit off and get rid of that. And then we can come back and revisit the top of all these feathers. And let's, um, let's go even um, closer here. Hopefully that will um, focus. Not quite there. Um, but basically on the back of all these feathers, we've got um, a little kind of sharp bit. Okay. Sorry, I didn't really focus in on that. Um, so I'm just going to knock those back off, making a little gentle curve for each one. And they're just quick as anything, just ping off. We need to be a little bit careful how we're feeding it um, towards the cutter. As soon as you hear the noise stop, you stop with your feed and the pressure. Otherwise, you're going to cut into the next feather. Um, so we've got a couple more here, and then we'll do the other side. These little short stubby ones are a little bit 
um, more forgiving than the long ones. So they've got all that kind of integral strength of the of the um, the grain. And you get into a little rhythm with something like this, especially if you're doing more than one. And you quite quickly just whiz that off. Felt that feather vibrating then as I was um, cutting it. So I'm bringing my finger in real close now. Just make sure uh, we don't ping one of these feathers off. Good. And you could always tidy that up with a little bit of abrasive. Um, if you, you know, if you want to go to town on it and make it super, super neat and tidy. Okay. So that's our wings. Good. So another question. Uh, yeah. So Fred, it was just saying um, that I'd imagine that this would be a, a good project for using the new Chromacraft paints and stains and looking forward to using them in some platters as well. So you, yeah. I know you've been doing a few bits as well, Ben. Absolutely. Loving the Chromacraft stuff. That's coming in soon. So keep an eye out for that, folks. Um, yeah, I can imagine these in bronzes and, and kind of that rusty look. I'm absolutely loving that product at the moment. Um, just uh, from Martin, he's saying the Axminster, the Axminster jump from the craft machines to the next level machine, so the tray runs, is huge. Do we have any plans for something in between? As a as an insider, have you any any secrets? Um, to... So they are remodeling a couple of the the ones that we already do. There's a um, um, what have we got coming up? So we've got we've got some things. I'm not sure how much I can tell you about them, but um, they are remodeling the the smaller craft um, uh, scroll saw. But there is a big jump in um, in price, and you know, totally with you there. Um, but at the moment, there's no kind of middle ground. I think it goes from you know a couple of hundred quid right up to. Um, these kind of bees knees ones, um, which are around about 700 um, last time I looked. Um, so a big, big jump in um, in price. Um, and I think we've talked about this on other videos, but it's all the small things. It's not, um, you know, something, one thing that really sets this saw apart from um, the craft one. They will both do um, a very similar job. I kind of liken it to um, to cars. Um, so this is your kind of top end Rolls Royce, and then you know the the craft ones are, are say like um, another make. Let's not let's not pick out in case you, you got one. Yeah, um, but yeah, absolutely. There's there's nothing that kind of bridges the gap at the moment. Um, but the craft ones a lovely little machine if you wanted to save you know a bit of money. Um, and there are some neat little. Um, um, add-ons they're going to be doing later on um, in the year. So we've got to cut our slot now. Um, this timber's all the same thickness right the way through, so I'm going to use my little off-cut just to test fit that. And what we don't want to do is cut it too big um, so it's, um, you know, so it's loose on our little birdie. So I'm cutting inside my line for now. Remember, we want to keep it a nice kind of tight fit. So I've done two parallel lines. I'm going to cut from one side to the other as in a little curve. That should just ping out. And then I'm going to rest on the back of the blade, bring it right into that corner, and just zip along the bottom there and just take that little nib out. We'll test fit. So I've still got a little bit to go. So trimming off one side or the other. Again, just allow a little shoulder to form before you start feeding it onto the blade. And I'm taking off the tiniest little sliver here. Patience is your best friend with something like this. Because like they all say, there's no putting it back on. That's really close. A little tickle on this side. 
trying to keep it um, nicely balanced across the two pieces or, or, or in the middle, I guess. And that's so close. That's going to, um, that will go, um, but I don't want to force that. What we have got is um, a little diamond file. Okay. So a little baby diamond file. Um, let's put that there. Sorry, I'm struggling to find where it is on camera. There we go. A little diamond file. Um, we do these in, in all sorts of different shapes. You get triangular ones. This is the flat one. Um, really good for just taking off a minute amount of material. So let's get that somewhere we can see it. And it's a bit like an abrasive, really. What this is good for is, um, is keeping that face flat. Um, quite often, if you try and do this with a bit of sandpaper, you're going to round off uh, one of the faces. Um, and then you get a little gap. And I'm applying a bit of pressure with this. Oh, you can see me kind of slip out of the, um, the material there. Oh, sorry. I think actually let's um, let's cut those other bits and then we'll come and do this on the bench. Um, so you got a better um, look at. Thanks, Colin. Sorry, I think with that, let's go back on our camera just a touch, just a moment. Just going to come back out. So it's trying to get the balance between seeing, you know, what you can see and um, being able to see some of the other bits. So I'm going to carry on cutting out these little slots. We'll cut them all. We'll do a, um, a little test fit. So again, just cutting into one corner, wait for that little chip to peep out. And then I'm going to pop the um, project resting on the back of the blade there and then just come across and just take out that little corner. Um, again, a little test fit, not quite there. And let's take a bit off of this side. Trying to clean up the bottom of that cut. And again, that's really kind of close. One more little tickle. Lovely. So that's what we want. We want it to kind of hold by itself um, and not just kind of be loose and fall off. I mean, it's got a bit of movement, but when we get the other piece that slots into that, that will give us a really good, um, a good kind of bond between the two pieces. So cutting out the little bit on the tail on the body. So we're making those two parallel cuts. We're going backing up and going from one corner to the other, or one side into the corner, and then resting on the back of the blade to cut across that little flat at the bottom. And that just pops out. So close. Oops. So form that little shoulder. And again, just taking the tiniest little sliver. And actually, I think I'm going to go a little bit deeper than that. It doesn't look like it was going to hold much. I'm taking that a little bit deeper. Again, a little bit tricky to hold on to. And then we'll try one of our off cuts. And we can see that goes in nicely now. This is the, um, the bit for the wings. 
and that put these at a slight angle um, then you get a really nice kind of shape for the bird Oops. so it grabbed it then turn the machine off nice and quick and just caught up on the blade there just checking make sure there's nothing obvious um, where it went wrong um, doesn't seem to be I guess I just let go momentarily lacking concentration so where I've made a little um, kind of cut there I'm just coming back up a little bit so we're cutting off that um, bit that kind of messed up that should help the uh, finish at the end and then um, let's come down here cut into that corner I'm going to use one of my little off cuts as support at the back here now to help turn the little body and then I almost like a little push stick to get into that bit and I like making these really small little things so um, they're really satisfying making things that are quite fragile that's why I like the kind of 3d cutting and the, the baubles and stuff you get that little fragile piece in the middle a really satisfying um, thing to make so I'm kind of happy with that it could be a little bit tighter um, you could always put a spot of glue on that um, so there's our wings and also remember at this point they're going to be a little bit thicker because we've got this um, this paper template on top still so we've got our bits we know they're going to kind of go together let me just retest my wings yeah we'll we'll make that work with our um with our file okay so we're back on the bench um i'm just gonna take this template off and you can see each of those little cuts Make a really nice um, pattern on the wing. Just getting the last that glue off. So each of these little cuts, um, you know, really give a nice um, kind of pattern. And um, you can see how fragile these are with those um, with the grain running that way. Um, so. You extra support when you're close um, when you're when you're making your cuts and you know a, a scroll saw is something that I'm quite happy to get close to the blade with with my finger um, it, you know but you know that's for you to judge um, for yourself um, usually I pop a little drill um, through the eye there but we can do that at a later time And there we go. We've got our components here. Let's go with the wings first. So we know it's going to fit um, in the body, but the wings themselves, they've got a little pinching area. So I'm just going to try and open that up with our little um, diamond file. Like I say, I prefer this to um, a piece of sandpaper. But if you've got a bit of sandpaper, you know, perhaps wrap it around a, a ruler or rule. Um, that will get in there and do much the same job. Keep the grit quite high so you're not, you know, whizzing too much material off because it will quite quickly go from being a bit too snug to, um, to too loose. Yep, that'll go with a bit of a bit, a little bit of force. We don't want to force it too much. Remember, this is a very thin material. We don't want to snap it at this stage. Otherwise, it's back on the scroll saw to 
cut another pair of wings or another body. Okay, so you can see the two components there. We've got our two little um, kind of cutouts and they are just going to interlock like so. Okay, and that's a really nice fit. It's not gonna come apart. Um, like I say, if it is a little loose, you could always just pop a little spot of glue in um, after you've put it together. And I've done a little pterodactyl and I'll show you that was a bit loose. Um, and that's it really, that's our little bird. Um, let me move that so you can get a better idea of what it looks like. You can see there's a slight angle to the wings from the wings to the tail, um, really nice little things and lovely in these, um, in these timbers. Um, so yeah, that's a, a swallow, I think, with that shaped tail or a swift, something like that. But you could um, round these off. Um, there's actually, when I um, downloaded the design, there was um, a dove shape. So you could do, um, you know, you could tie a bit of string to this and do a, a pair of turtle doves for, for Christmas. Um, they could hang on the tree really lovely little decorations um or you could you know make it your own make your own designs up over here i got um a little crow crow shape let me just grab a board actually so you can see a little bit more the wood on the wood is not showing it up very well but this is a little crow shape slightly different wing design um more of a kind of hooked beak and he's got his little um feet underneath um, and more of an angle on the wings. But you can imagine those um, hanging up as a mobile, a whole bunch of crows circling around. Um, and also here, we've done a little um, pterodactyl. That's, um, you know, loads of these that dig out the cliffs down in Lyme Regis and charm of the local um, kind of fossil hotspots. Um, the flying, flying lizards. Um, but yeah, you can make whatever shape you want, make this project your own. And this is really, you know, just tied up with a bit of fishing wire. So I've got a real fishing wire. Um, you know, Craig very kindly brought them in. We've got two keen fishermen in here and Craig and Colwyn. And just this thin, very thin, it's visible really. Um, and that will, you know, tie around your, your bird. What I would say is to find the balance point. If you're tying it up, find where these balance. And on these birds, it's just on the back of the wing there. Okay. What I did before is to drill a hole up here. And actually, they hang vertically when you do that. So find the balance point. If you're changing the shape, again, find you know where it's going to hang from and, and tie it to that point. Or drill a little um, pinhole through and just thread your um, fishing wire or whatever you want to hang it with um, from that point. Okay. So we've got any more questions or anything, Colwyn? No, I think we're all good. We're all good. So um, just a few things we wanted to say. If we come back onto that main camera there. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to, to like and subscribe. Now, next week, our, um, our lovely wood turners, Colwyn and Jason, um, they're off to Wizardry and Wood. Um, wish them the best of luck for that one. Go and join them if you can. It's going to be a fantastic event. Um, but come back here. Me and Craig are holding the fort. We are going to be turning a pen, and Craig's got some really lovely little designs of some um, some little pieces of furniture he's going to make with you. Um, so come back and join us next week. Um, like and subscribe if you know it, it'd be a great help for us. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>